<laughs> All set, okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Redevelopment Agency meeting of May 21st, 2008 is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. These proceedings are being presented live on KCLV Cable Channel 2 and are closed captioned for our hearing impaired viewers. The Redevelopment Agency meeting, as well as all other KCLV programming, can be viewed on the city's website at www.kclv.tv. The proceedings will be rebroadcast on KCLV Channel 2 and the web and the web the Wednesday of the, of the meeting at 8 p.m. and also on Friday at 4 a.m., Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 7 a.m., and the following Monday at 1 p.m. And, of course, uh, we know that the building is protected by state-of-the-art fire detection and suppression sprinkler system, so should uh, there be an alarm, please exit and assemble on the Las Vegas Boulevard side of the building, and once it's safe to re-enter, uh, we will uh, advise everybody no reason to concern yourself with this announcement. It's made as a matter of caution. All right, we'll go to item number three, approval of the final minutes by reference of the regular redevelopment agency meeting of March 19th, 2008. May I have a motion, please? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, no additions or deletions. I make a motion for approval of the minutes, please. Thank you. Let's vote on that, please. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number four is discussion of possible action regarding a grant deed whereby the City of Las Vegas Redevelopment Agency grants a 25-foot radius spandrel at the southeast corner of H Street and Van Buren Avenue to the City of Las Vegas for dedication of rights of way. Mr. Adams? Good morning. Good morning. Scott Adams, Operations Officer of the RDA. Uh, this is a, a relatively simple item. It, it's uh, on the overhead here. I have a, a shot of a... Um, Parcel property, it's that which is sort of cross-hatched, which is out in the street radius. Um, it's a property owned by the RDA, and our management of the RDA asset inventory, we discovered that the RDA owns this little radius, and uh, we, we actually don't even know how we acquired it. It probably dates back to the early days of urban renewal, um, and it was something that got overlooked through the years and really needs to be dedicated back to the city of Las Vegas. It's part of the street right away. The property behind the curb is owned privately. It's only this little piece that is owned by the RDA. So this is simply a matter of uh, deeding this parcel from the redevelopment agency to the city of Las Vegas. So it goes in their right of way inventory as part of the street. Right. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Adams? <coughs> All right. Councilman Barlow? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. I would like to move uh, to follow staff's recommendation for approval. All right. Let's vote on that, please. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 5 is discussion of possible action regarding the Fremont Square Parking Validation Program and other parking and easement-related matters, formerly known as Neonopolis for Warula Hayward, LLC, located at 450 Fremont Street in Ward 5. Mr. Adams? This is an item... Um, uh, this is a continuation of an item where we have, uh, you have, as the redevelopment agency, continuously granted um, validation to Parkers in Fremont Square, formerly known as Neonopolis. And this dates back to uh, September 10th of 2006. Since that time, there have been numerous extensions of a validation program. Um, in a recent meeting with Mr. Joshi, who represents the ownership of of Fremont Square, um, we discovered that his current validation expired uh, last week. And he was insistent that we extend the privilege of validation to Fremont Square on a continuing basis. So I put it on the agenda this morning for your consideration. It goes before you without our any, without any recommendation for your for your consideration, I would say um, that we have been working with with the ownership of Fremont Square. They uh, uh, recently opened a new ground floor deli in Fremont Square. There's another uh, couple restaurants coming right behind it that will be open in the ground floor of the building, and we do continue to work with them on uh, two other major tenants, and have actually been. Uh, discussing with them the provision of parking uh, on a more permanent basis 
for employees of those tenants as an inducement to get those tenants in the building. Uh, one of those has been named publicly, which is Telemundo, um, and that's certainly a tenant we'd like to see and have branded on the building and is something that we've been working with them on. So we offer uh, this item for your consideration, and I know uh, Mr. Joshi is here to answer any questions that you might have regarding the project. Thank you very much. Are there any questions of Mr. Adams or Mr. Joshi at this point? I'd like the record to reflect. I asked Mr. Joshi to be here. I saw him yesterday at the ICSE conference, and he asked whether or not his presence was required. I said it's probably a good idea that you come in case any of the council members have any questions. I have had discussions this past week uh, with um, representatives from Telemundo in the uh, corporate offices, I believe back in New York, if I'm not mistaken, who indicated to me that uh, they virtually have a done deal with Mr. Joshi uh, for the third floor of Neonopolis. And uh, they said that in order to make the deal final, they would have to have a concession as far as 30 parking spaces. I spoke to Mr. Adams. I asked him whether or not that's something that's a reasonable request or not. He said it seems to be a reasonable request. I can't commit to it, but nevertheless, I told him that uh, uh, we believe it probably is a reasonable request when ultimately made, that we're not going to take any action on anything until we see something in writing. And uh, he indicated that uh, they will be finalizing that deal, which is good news for Neonopolis. Uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Joshi, well, when are the other restaurants going to open up? I understand that the deli is already open. Yes, deli is open. The uh, sushi place should be opening up in the next couple of weeks. We're just waiting for the health permit to be issued. Is it a national brand? or is it No, he's a local man. He's got two locations in town, one in uh, North Las Vegas and also one in Henderson. Uh, we also have an Italian restaurant coming from Los Angeles. They have three locations there, one in Beverly Hills at Farmer's Market, one at the Third Street Promenade as well as uh, the Kodak Center in the Hollywood Wine area. And they also have a location in Lake Las Vegas called Luna Italian Restaurant. They've signed a deal with us, so they'll be taking a front uh, location. This way we can, in the first phase, get the three restaurants open up that connects the east and the west Fremont area and keep it all uh, occupied by tenants. And then thereafter we'll have these three major tenants, which will uh, probably be signed in the next uh, 30 to 60 days for opening this year and we'll keep certain uh, tenants uh, not leased, and after the momentum increases, we'll lease those tenants also. All right, thank you for being here. Um, any other comments or questions? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Mr. Joshi, tell me about the deli. Uh, I work downtown, and I know people that work in the downtown area are always looking for more restaurants, so here's a little free advertising. Tell us about the deli. Deli is uh, owned by two individuals. They're from Coronado area of San Diego. Mm. Their parents had a store there for 15 years, and they uh, made a lot of money by selling that particular location right across from Hotel Coronado. So we went there, we saw them, we convinced them to come here. They moved here just for the Indianapolis property. And they opened up this location, and in the first month they've done very well. Thanks for all the work that's been done in promoting in downtown, and a lot of traffic has occurred in the last uh, 30, 60 days, and a lot of promotions have been happening. So they've done very well in business already, and they're committed to stay here for a long time to come. Is it a sit-down yes, restaurant a sit -down where you can go and order sandwiches or other deli kind of food? I think it's all three. I think it's a sit-down place. It's on the counter. It's also delivery by orders uh, for the offices and the various uh, businesses in the downtown area. Okay. Thank you. Did you have any uh, success yesterday at the conference? Uh, attracting let me hear about the conference. Just let you know, there are two people who stopped in our booth. We had a booth this year for Indianapolis. And one was a lender who said, I'm a lender, but I don't have any money to lend. And uh, there were tenants and developers who came in and said, Yoshi, what are we going to do now, now that this economy is the way it is? But all I can tell you is Neonapolis had a booth with a great uh, old model that we had from years ago. We remodeled it. And we had a lot of traffic. People were taking photographs. They were interested tenants also. We had two or three tenants that are very interested in coming in because of the convention. So we had a very good uh, showing. Are you going to be out there again today? Yes, we'll be here. Yeah, after this, I'm going straight back to the booth. Very good. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Mayor, if yes. I could, I, I probably need to make some uh, technical comments here. Um, there, parking um, at Neonopolis is governed pretty specifically by the agreement that really is the glue that connects the building with the parking garage underneath, and that is the reciprocal easement agreement. There is an, ag an agreement in place 
that governs how we behave together as a garage and, and their air rights assets or the building. That reciprocal easement agreement has specific provisions governing parking. And we're able to provide general grants of validation under parking, as we've done, uh, which is basically kind of a write-down of tickets of parking to the general public. But when it comes to providing specific parking commitments to specific users, we're going to need to, we've been working with the city attorney's office, make some specific amendments to that reciprocal easement agreement and then actually provide those commitments under a separate parking license agreement. That's what we've been working on with uh, Joshi's attorney and our city attorney's office. So if you do go forward with anything relative to parking, I would recommend you simply extend what you've been granting, which is a general validation for a period of time, until we can work out the terms of the, the reciprocal easement agreement, which requires signature by both parties, as well as a parking license agreement. The thing that I'm concerned about is that in, the, in that parking license agreement, we have very strict performance requirements on the part of, their, of, of Joshi and his owner regarding signing of leases and commitments of leases in the project, that we not just generally grant something until we get proven performance um, on leases you know, with Telemundo or otherwise. So, but there are some legal issues there that govern how we're able to provide those kinds of concessions. And I, I, we can't simply just give him validation for his employees for, uh, for 30 spaces. <laughs> we, it's a little more technical than that. So I would suggest we just, if you're going to do something, just extend what you've been doing for a period of time to give us time to work out a deal that would be performance-based for Telemundo and anybody else. Very good. Mayor. All right, uh, Councilman. Yes, um, Mr. Adams is right. My concern would be uh, for the next tenant, if in fact um, a tenant comes in and, and requests the same um, level of uh, parking spaces that you're requesting now for uh, your proposed tenant, how, how, does, how would that affect us as far as our parking spaces if in fact we uh, move in this direction? Um, the, the commitments that we are looking at for employee parking for Telemundo are minimal in relation to the total size of the garage. I think we've been talking somewhere around 30, 30 spaces roughly, and the garage is hundreds. So we're, that it would not impact parking to the general public. Um, the, the, we were working with them on a larger uh, club tenant to go in the ground floor that would have required more than that. But we, you know, when you look at the general parking availability in the area, we don't believe these small commitments for employee parking would have any negative impact on the viability of the facility at all. In fact, quite frankly, it's, if it's that, it's sort of the reverse. If we can get these major tenants in there and get them committed through taking care of their employee parking, it just makes uh, Fremont Square even more viable. Um, I think there's a... There's some real value in having the name Telemundo and NBC affiliated with the building and brand the building. This is certainly a city of brands, and and um, and um, and it might move it in a direction uh, away from the negativity the name Neon Offices attached to the building. Right, and I agree with the with the branding. I had an opportunity to sit and meet with um, the owners. Uh, from uh, or the executives from Telemundo, and I, I agree with you that we do need to have such a brand. But my concern uh, this day going forward would be with the next tenant, uh, are we providing those same accommodations for every tenant that comes into the facility as far as parking spaces, or is this a one-time, one-shot deal? Um, we've been responding to their efforts to lease Parking, uh, in this case, there's only two instances where they've requested parking for their employees to, to really secure the anchor tenants that would help with the viability of the facility. And so at this point, it's only limited to those two. It hasn't been made available to any general group uh, or, or other tenants in the building. That's correct. I think we have 600 some spaces in the underground parking garage. We have 900 
parking spaces in the red parking garage for which we have non-exclusive rights to it. So we have about 1,500 square spaces. We have 200,000 square feet buildings. So at uh, 5 to 1 ratio, you need about 1,000 car spaces. So we are pretty much uh, at par for parking. So even if we give it for the uh, employees, like Scott mentioned, I think we should be okay for the tenants who are credit worthy and their larger tenants will require it. If I'm answering that properly. I think. Okay, thank you. No good. Realize um, a lot of folks that come into that vicinity don't drive. Um, I, Saturday night, I sat up in the pint and watched bus after bus drop literally hundreds of visitors off at the intersection. Um, <clears throat> because of um, the Country Music Awards and everything that was going on on, on the FSC, every single bus would drop anywhere from 100 to 200 people off, and they were all coming by bus from the Strip into downtown. So a lot of the people that come downtown don't drive cars. They come a different way. So that even a normal parking ratio in our downtown might not apply for a retail visitor because they're coming in a different way into the downtown. Thank you. Councilman, do you have a motion? Yes. Um, I would like to move to follow staff's recommendation. I haven't, I haven't made one. I, I guess uh, what I'm saying is if you were to extend extend what you've previously done, and, and I, I, we probably would need at least 60 in the vicinity of 90 days to effectuate the agreements that we've been working on with Tolmundo and the other tenant and get that to you for, for more of a permanent parking license consideration. So maybe at a minimum, a continuation of uh, the extension of validation that you've been doing for at least 60 days, if not 90 days, at, at your uh, at your consideration. Then, then that's what I would like to see: um, a continuation of the two of you working together, at least for the next 60 to 90 days. Okay. So the motion is to extend it for 90 or 60. Well, well, 90. Would you like 90? <laughs> yes. Okay, then we'll go 90. Okay. All right. Let's vote on that, please. Thank you. Post. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilman. Okay. All right. Um, this is the time for citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the redevelopment agency. No subject may be acted upon by the redevelopment agency unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. Would anyone like to be heard at this time? All right. Before we adjourn, I... Uh, I can't give the direction under citizens' participation, but please take what I'm saying as deserving some kind of a action. Um, yesterday, I visited the booth that uh, the city of Las Vegas had at the ICSD convention, sat there for about two and a half hours uh, talking to various attendees, and um, I, I was asking each and every one of them who came by whether they did business with the city, and everybody said yes. And I said, where? And they said, uh, the Fashion Show Mall. And they said, uh, North Las Vegas. And they said, everything except Las Vegas. I, I think what bothered me more than anything is everybody who was there thinks they're doing business in the city of Las Vegas. Um, the city of Las Vegas has a value. Our name has a value. Our brand has a value. We know that from the folks who are exploring uh, using uh, our, our city property to have advertisements. I'm wondering whether or not we could protect this, whether we could enjoin other people from suggesting that they live in Las Vegas, having Las Vegas addresses when they live in Henderson, having Las Vegas addresses when they're doing business in North Las Vegas. I think we might want to protect ourselves and get some value out of it because everybody thinks they're doing business with us for whatever it's worth. Okay, meetings adjourned.